I'm just surprised, but at the same time disappointed that a lot of towns on the coast of my home state of Oregon have their tsunami sirens not active. Either that, or they've been removed completely. Not everyone outside on the beach have their phones with them, even though it's a good idea. And not everyone's ringers are on, so they can't hear what messages may be sent during an emergency. Also, not everyone's watching TV or listening to the radio, where they can see an emergency alert message scroll across their screen, indicating a tsunami was coming. Then they would have a plan in place and adjust their activities if needed. First of all, starting with Astoria, Oregon, which is the county seat of Clatsop County and the northwest most county in the state. This is the one with the four mile long bridge that connects you to neighboring Washington State across the Columbia River. The city does not have a tsunami warning system in place at all even though that they are 14 miles from where the river meets the Pacific Ocean. Because this is a touristy town, they do need to have an emergency warning system in place so that in case there is a tsunami, people can have enough time to get to high ground. Also, the city of Astoria is where a lot of deep draft vessels come in and out of port serving Lower Columbia customers in the ports of Longview, Washington and Portland, Oregon. In neighboring Seaside, which is 16 miles south of Astoria, they have a system in place. They have eight Whalen WPS 2905s scattered around their city, and they do their monthly tests on the first Wednesday of each month at 11 a.m. from September to May. They only do silent tests during the summer when more tourists flock into their beaches. The city of Cannon Beach, which is 15 miles south of Seaside, they also have a system of Waylands as well. They test them also on the first Wednesday of each month at 11 a.m. with a recording of a mooing cow. They also have a system of Waylands too. They test them also on the first Wednesday of each month at 11 a.m., but they do it year-round. They have a very unique way to not cause any panic to any of their visitors while they're visiting their city. Instead of playing a siren sound, they play a recording of a mooing cow. In the city of Tillamook, most of their sirens have been removed even though that the city is a few miles inland from the ocean. Most of their sirens used to be part of the former Trojan power plant warning system. Along with other tsunami sirens in Tillamook County, most of them are inactive. Now Lincoln City, which is 45 miles south of Tillamook, they have two Federal Signal 2001 SRNBs, a Model 2, and an STL-10. They test them on a weekly basis. They test them every Wednesday between 11 o'clock a.m. and noon. U.S. Highway 101 is often the main street throughout towns on the Oregon coast which can cause significant traffic delays. This is especially true in this town of Lincoln City, where geography and tourism combine to create traffic problems. Most of the tourists who flock to their beach are visiting from Portland and Salem. 20 miles south of Lincoln City is the little town of Depot Bay, and they have a warning system in place. Just like the other previously mentioned Oregon Coast towns, they also test their sirens on the first Wednesday of every month at 11 a.m. Depot Bay, Oregon is also known as the world's smallest harbor, 
and also a great place for whale watching. 12 miles south of Depot Bay, another city on the Oregon coast that has no tsunami warning sirens in place is the city of Newport. How exactly do they intend to warn their citizens and their tourists in the event of a tsunami? Text message like wireless emergency alerts are still not good enough because when people are on the beach, most of the time they're not using their phones and some of their phones may be vibrated or silenced. Newport is also home to the Oregon Coast Aquarium, which is one of the city's most popular tourist destinations. The city is also the westmost point of U.S. Highway 20, stretching 3,365 miles from Newport, Oregon, all the way across the country to Boston, Massachusetts. 15 miles south of Newport is the city of Waldport, they used to have a tsunami warning system in place before they removed it in the year 2013, and one out of two of their old sirens is now in private possession. The city's volunteer fire department does have a siren in place, however it is inactive. In my opinion, in case there is a tsunami, they really ought to use it. 12 miles south of Waldport is a little town called Yahats, and they totally have no warning system in place. They do have a siren that's on top of the fire station, but it's very old and inactive. So, in case there is a tsunami, how are they going to get warning? Not everyone's on their phones, and not everyone's ringers are on. Perhaps their police and volunteer fire departments may have to drive around using their sirens from their vehicles. 25 miles south of Yahats is the city of Florence, and they have a warning system in place. The Florence system has four sirens scattered around their city, anywhere west of Highway 101 and east of the Sayusla River. Their testing schedule is always every once a month. However, instead of the first Wednesday at 11 a.m., like most Oregon Coast towns, this one is on the last Friday of every month at 11 a.m. They also used to have a red STH-10 siren hidden behind tree shrubs on the hill near the Old Town District, which is located on the south end of town which is possibly removed as of today. This siren used to serve as their tsunami warning system before it was replaced by the four modulators. It was also used to signal their volunteer fire department. 22 miles south of Florence is the city of Reedsport in the county of Douglas. They have two Model 5 sirens to signal their volunteer fire department, and they test them daily every evening at 7 p.m. However, the Douglas County system consisted five Federal Signal Modulator 6024s in the communities of Gardiner, Reedsport, and Winchester Bay. The entire Douglas County system is inactive and is expected to be removed. One out of the five modulators have been removed from the Umpqua Beach area back in 2019 and is now parked behind a volunteer fire station. That particular tsunami siren is painted Hawaiian green and it will be replacing the Model 5 soon. 27 miles down U.S. Highway 101 are the cities of North Bend and Coos Bay. They have two Sentry Defender-type emergency sirens. However, they only test them during the winter and spring seasons. The port of Coos Bay is also Oregon's largest seaport, which is halfway in between the Puget Sound region up in Washington 
and the San Francisco Bay Area down in Central California. Both the cities of North Bend and Coos Bay are called Oregon's Bay Area. The Southwest Oregon Regional Airport, also known as OTH, is a public airport located in adjacent North Bend and is the fifth busiest airport in Oregon, as well as the largest airport on the Oregon coast. It offers daily flights to and from San Francisco and seasonal flights to and from Denver, Colorado. 23 miles south of Coos Bay is the city of Bandon. They have tsunami warning sirens in place, which are five ATI HPSS 32s, which are very identical to those found in San Francisco, California. Like most Oregon Coast towns, they always test them on the first Wednesday at 11 a.m. 26 miles south of Bandon is a small town called Port Orford. This town is in the county of Curry, which is the southwest most county in the state of Oregon. Most of Curry County's tsunami warning systems are inactive. Either that, or they've been repurposed as volunteer fire sirens. 28 miles south of Port Orford is another town called Gold Beach. This arch bridge crosses the mouth of the Rogue River, which the river itself empties into the Pacific Ocean right here. The city's siren system is for fire calls only, but they can serve double duty for tsunami warnings. And finally, another 28 miles to the south is the city of Brookings, which is the very last town on the Oregon coast to drive through before you cross into California. The city of Brookings tsunami sirens are inactive, but they are functional, so in case they need to use them, they have the opportunity.